The first topic is nutrient density versus nutrient quality. Nutrient density refers to the amount of nutrients in food relative to the total calories. Some nutrient dense foods are fruit and vegetables, while poorly dense foods are soda and candy. Versus nutrient quality, the amount and variety of nutrients in a given food. Some high quality examples are salads, greens, whole grains, and low quality are cupcakes and cookies. This ties into the next card, what are discretionary calories? Discretionary calories are essentially wasted calories. Foods that are high in discretionary calories are muffins, donuts, apple pie, whole milk, etc. And foods low in discretionary calories, so good foods, are whole wheat bread, brown rice, green beans, steamed broccoli, strawberries, apples, low-fat milk, plain yogurt, kidney beans, and lean ground beef. The next card is on the buffet effect. It basically says that if you have more options in front of you, you will eat more. This is why I think decreasing variety might help with dietary adherence. Up until a point though, we don't want to be depriving ourselves or starving ourselves or limiting too much because that encourages going off the rails completely. So be careful with variety, but also make sure not to limit yourself to too little. The next topic is common barriers. There are four barriers on this card. That does not mean there are four barriers total. Everybody has their own struggles. Everybody has their own challenges. The first barrier is a lack of time. And I would say this is the most common. Two solutions to help fix this are to prepare food in larger quantities and to use shorter recipes. The second barrier is lack of willpower. The best solution for this is to identify tough situations and do your best to not get put in those situations again, or to prepare beforehand if you have to go and it's unavoidable. Going off of a lack of willpower, the term ambivalence is used a lot because ambivalence means the state of having mixed feelings about change. So if you're ambivalent, it doesn't mean you don't have willpower, it means you're indifferent to making a change right now. That's okay, it's your choice, I can't change that. The third barrier is family or friends with different habits. Sometimes our friends want us to go out, they want us to eat and feel good about it, and that's admirable, but it can get in the way of health goals. The best way to fix this barrier is to express your goals clearly to them and hope they respect that. The fourth and final common barrier is lack of knowledge. The best solution for this is to go to credible sources. I know that my channel is a resource for you, as well as YouTube, as well as the internet. These are all resources for you. And I'm fairly confident that any health question you have, you could find the answer to it yourself through your phone in your house. All right, factors influencing metabolism. I already covered this in another video, which you should check out. In that video, I went over the top four factors pretty extensively. This card has seven factors, and I'm going to briefly explain each. The first factor is age. As you age, your lean mass decreases, and as your lean mass decreases, you require fewer calories. Here's how much less you should be eating as you get older. Factor two is your body composition. Having more lean weight equals a faster metabolic rate. So the more lean weight you have, the better your body is able to process food and the more you should eat. Factor three is lifestyle. Living an unactive lifestyle means you burn less calories and you should be eating less calories. Factor four is low calorie diets. It's going to alter your metabolic rate so if you're eating low calorie diets and constantly fluctuating how much food or how little food is being put in your body, then it will alter your metabolic rate and it will really throw off how much you're able to eat and how your body processes food. Factor five is hypothyroidism. It is genetic. It means you have a slower metabolic rate and you must eat accordingly. Factor six is also genetic. It is your brown fat. 
how much of your body is brown fat. Having a higher percent of brown fat means that you burn calories faster. And finally, factor seven, allergies. This can result in weight loss or weight gain depending on the scenario. Okay, which bodily systems are involved in digestion? Digestion and absorption of food are regulated by four bodily systems. The nervous system, the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system, and the endocrine system. If you have an issue in any one of those systems, genetic or otherwise, it could influence how your body digests food. The final topic on today's video is protein needs. I talk about protein in almost every Q&A because it's really important and this card will show you exactly how much protein you need. There are three groups, people who do no activity, people who do light to moderate activity, and people who do moderate to vigorous activity. Determine for yourself where you're at. For people who do no activity, they should still be consuming 0.8 to 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Here's how you can calculate that for yourself. For people who do light to moderate activity, if that is cardio, 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight. Or if you do light to moderate resistance training, that should be increased to 1.5 to 2 grams per kilogram. If you do resistance training, you're going to need more protein than somebody who does cardio training. And finally, if you're in that moderate to vigorous group, Doing cardio training, you're going to need 1.5 to 2 grams per kilogram, so the same as light to moderate resistance training. Or if you do moderate to vigorous resistance training, is 1.7 to 2.2 grams per kilogram. And that actually breaks down nicely because 2.2 grams per kilogram is 1 gram per 1 pound. And I know not many Americans use kilograms, so I'll put kilogram to pound conversions somewhere up here. But if you're doing moderate to vigorous resistance training, max out at one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So the maximum on this list is one gram per one pound of body weight. That means maximum you should be eating your body weight in grams of protein. I weigh 160 pounds, so I should be consuming 160 grams of protein a day or less. All right, that was Nutrition Q&A 5. I hope you enjoyed. Please like the video, please subscribe, and leave your questions for the next Q&A in the comments below. I look forward to reading them. Until then, I'll see you next Saturday. Take care, everybody. Peace.